Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening, friends. It is a joy to welcome you tonight to our ongoing revival and evangelistic series. I want to thank God for all of you who have joined us faithfully every evening to listen to the preaching of the Word of God and to pray that God will also bring new changes into your life. And for our friends who are joining us tonight for the first time, welcome and join us again tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the next day and for the remainder of this journey through the wonderful and inspiring book of Acts. Yesterday, the man servant of God showed us how Paul and Barnabas preached in the city of Lystra. And having been kicked, kicked out of Antioch, they went to Iconium and preached there. But there was chaos and violence and this faithful man of God moved to Lystra 20 miles away. It was while in Lystra they performed a miracle of healing the crippled man. The people were amazed by these signs and wonders. The people gathered around and they declared that these were not mere human beings. They saw that Paul and Barnabas were Greek gods. They identified them as Greek gods. And they wanted to offer sacrifices to them and worship them. But Paul and Barnabas were faithful to God. They refused to receive the worship that only belongs to God. They pointed these people to God. And we were left there wondering what else followed, what came next. Tonight we're going to look at the book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19 through 28 and hear what God has to say to us and if, if, if you have your Bible you can follow along with me you can pick it up and follow along with me as we read the Word of God the Bible says that Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there and having persuaded the multitudes they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city supposing him to be dead However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Sidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Father, we thank you for this, your word. We now ask for permission to interpret to meditate on your word give us understanding oh god open our hearts oh father and come in oh lord open our ears to hear your word and tonight father if there's anyone who needed to hear these words oh god i pray that they will be comforted they will rejoice to hear from you if we pray in jesus name amen the bible says that after paul and Barnabas had told the people to stop worshipping them. After they had persuaded these people not to give them the glory, the honor that belongs to God only, you would expect the next sentence, the next verse to say, And Paul and Barnabas dwelt together happily, having fulfilled their mission having been faithful to God and having performed the work of the ministry. But you will be a fool or spiritually immature to think that the life of the Christian is a life of 
a bed of roses, that everything goes smoothly, that even after being faithful to God, there are trials which come along the way. There are many dangers, there are persecutions that come to the life of the Christian, especially at the point of obedience. It is during the time when you make the decision to be faithful to God, that time when you make the decision, for instance, to return a faithful tithe, that all of a sudden the car breaks down and you are faced with your first test. Am I going to fix the car or am I going to be faithful to God? If you pass the test, if you stand with God, your faith grows and matures and the devil realizes that he needs to bring different kinds of tests, not that kind. Because here we are told that after Paul and Barnabas refuse the worship that is only due to God, Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there. These were troublemakers. These were not people who came to listen to the preaching of the word of God. These were people who had differences with Paul. They are people who wanted to kill Paul and Barnabas. These were enemies of the gospel. These were servants of the devil himself. Antioch is 120 miles from where Paul and Barnabas are. Lystra is 20 miles away. And these people have traveled all the way and they come to cause chaos. They come from Antioch. They come from Iconium. They come on foot, 110 miles from Antioch, 20 miles from Iconium, to come with only one mission, to discredit Paul and Barnabas, and if possible, to kill him. How I wish that they had used this energy and zeal for good, or this energy and zeal for God. But many times we see that when the enemy enters the minds of people, they have a different kind of energy, a different kind of power, and they will work day and night to discredit God and to discredit the people of God. The Bible says they persuaded the multitudes. And I would like to imagine this picture. I'd like to think how that might have been. Maybe they came... They had traveled a long distance, 110 miles on foot. That takes weeks, friends. That's not a one day's journey. And they get there, they're probably tired, but they're energized by this zeal, this demonic zeal. And they start pointing out, say, that is Paul, that is Barnabas. These are trouble. These are fake people. These are preachers or rumor mongers. These are not true people. And I would have liked to believe that the people in that town probably told them, no, 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 no. These are servants of God. We have observed them. They healed the cripple the other day. And as a matter of fact, we thought that they were gods. We were getting ready to sacrifice to them. We were getting ready to worship them because they are the personification of God. At least you will have expected that kind of defense. But what we see is different. These people who a few moments before were willing to worship Paul and Barnabas. These people who a few moments prior to this were willing to sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. These people who just a few moments before thought of Paul and Barnabas as God personified in man. Their minds were turned so quickly and now they were ready to cause bodily harm to Paul to the point of actually killing him. How easily people forget. How quickly people forget. My friends, this is typical of human nature. Do not feel bad that the person you helped the other day has quickly forgotten all about it. Do not feel bad that the person who was close to you just the other day has quickly forgotten all about it. That is human nature. 
They are the same people who cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, worshiping Jesus, throwing away their clothes and their coats, that Jesus would walk on on his way to Jerusalem. A few days later, they were gathered in the multitude and they were crying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Even Pilate did not know what to do and he's asking, what should I do with this man, with this man who is called Jesus the Christ? Crucify him, crucify him just the other day. The Bible says to you and I, do not put your trust in man. Do not put your trust in man. You will be betrayed. You will be disappointed. You will be surprised. But put your trust in Jesus. Anchor your trust in Jesus. Jesus will never fail you. Jesus will never betray you. Jesus will never let you down. Jesus will never disappoint you. Why? He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He came through for you the other day. He's still ready to come through for you even today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same. He does not change with changing years. He does not change with changing seasons. He remains to be the same. He did it for somebody else. He'll do it for you. I was about 10 years old when I witnessed mob justice, what is known as mob justice. At that time, we were living in a town called Shaurimoyo in Nairobi. And um, all of a sudden, we heard some chaos and uh, people were running. And there were shouts of, huyo, huyo, huyo. And we saw a big mob running from Kamukunji, heading towards Sharimoyo. And we stood and tried to see what was going on. There was a man who was being chased and he was running. And I did not quite understand what was going on. I thought maybe there was a campaign, a political campaign, rally going on, whatever it was, or, or maybe because Shori Moyo is close to City Stadium, or maybe there had been a game and um, some, some team had won, and, and as, as was the case, uh, there were dancing coming down, but this was not dancing. The man was running for his dear life. But as he was cutting a corner somewhere, someone had waylaid him, and he tripped him and the man fell down. And people rained stones upon this man. And I remember up to this day watching and hearing the cries of this man. As he was crying, but his cries were drowned by this mob that was out to get him. I know very soon he probably passed out because it happened so fast. And before you know it, they had lynched him and the people disappeared back to the places where they came from. Stoning is such a humiliating way to die. It's a very painful death. It's actually a very embarrassing thing because everybody knows about it. Everybody talks about it. And here the Bible says that they stoned Paul who just the other day they were praising as a God. They stoned him a humiliating way. They stoned him and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Maybe he thought about what he had done to Stephen. Maybe he saw what Stephen saw, I don't know, but he was unconscious. They dragged him to this, out of the city and left him for dead. But the Bible says later on when the disciples came, they gathered around him, he rose up and went to the city. Was he resurrected? Was this a resurrection? Some people think so. I don't know. But it was simply another affirmation that God was not done with him yet. That God still had something for him to do. You know, the thing that Satan 
had planned to finish you, I want to declare to you that thing is powerless. It will not finish you because God is not done with you yet. The snare that Satan had set for you, as Psalm 124 says, the snare is broken and you have escaped. You will escape as well. Because even though you've been left for dead, even though you've been supposed to be dead, God still has something for you. You might have been left for dead, but you're not done yet. Your marriage may look like it is dead, but God is not done with you yet. The relationship might look as if it is dead, but God has something for you yet. Your career prospects may seem to be dead, but God is not done with you yet. Yes, you may look at the life of your children or the life of your sibling or the life of your parents or the life of your loved one or whatever it is. And the devil is whispering to you that leave that alone. That is gone. But we serve a God who loves to call the things which are not as though they are. He still has another plan. The Bible says he rose up and went to the city. Why did he go into the city? I don't know why he went to the city. But I know what happened next. I know that there was a young man who was observing. In that city, there was a young man who was listening to the preaching of Paul and Barnabas. I know that in that city, there was a young man who was watching the signs and the wonders, the miracles that were being performed. I know in that city, there was a young man who saw Paul being stoned to the point of death. I know in that city, there was a, that young man saw Paul and actually saw Paul. Everybody thought he was dead, but he saw him come the next day. That young man who saw the bravery, the dedication, the loyalty, the miracles being performed by Paul. That young man we are told in Acts chapter 16 verse 1 is Timothy. Timothy would later go on to become the spiritual son of Paul. Timothy was converted as a result of the ministry of Paul and Barnabas in that city. You know, friends, some of the trials we go through are not for us. Some of the trials that you go through are not actually for you. But God is using you to reach someone else. What a blessing and what a joy it is to be used by God to advance his glory. The remaining portion of the passage talks about Paul and Barnabas making their way back to Antioch. The Bible says now they're they are, they are doing the whole journey again, but now in reverse, they return to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. In verse 22, they, they say that as they went, they did four things which are important for us to, to look at. They strengthened the disciples, whichever place they went, whichever place they went, they found the disciples, the little churches that they had already formed, the first thing they did was to strengthen them. They were there to offer them encouragement. The Bible says not only did they encourage, not only did they strengthen them, but they also exhausted them. The Greek word that is used there is the same uh, verb, the, the root verb used for the work of the Holy Spirit, the comforter. And so they not only strengthened the disciples, but they also comforted the disciples. They comforted them with the message. They told them, we must, through many trials or many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. They warned them of the approaching hardship. In other words, they told them, the life you have chosen for yourself, the life that God has called you into is a life of storms. When he says, we must through many, the word used for many can also be translated as various or different kinds of variety of trials. You might think that you have gone through one trial or through one storm and it's over. But the Bible says, no, 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 no different varieties are going to come. Many different kinds of storms are going to come. I've shared with you already, the life of the Christian is the life of storms. Either you are in a storm right now, 
that gives you comfort it gives you consolation that yes you are still in the will of god because even in the storm jesus is with you he is able to walk on the storm he is able to stand on the storm he is able to speak to the storm and say peace be still but he's also able to speak to your heart and say he shall keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on you on him but also let me tell you the storm is not permanent it comes to an end nothing is permanent in this world other than your relationship with god nothing else is permanent even whatever you are going through right now friends one day very soon you shall look back and you shall thank god that oh i remember that time it was not easy i was going through something we were going through something but god came through the life of the christian in the life of the storm either you are in the storm or you just came out of the storm and if you just come out of the storm you have an opportunity to tell other people the goodness of God do not be like the disciples who wondered and said what manner of man is this you are to strengthen your brothers but if you're not in the storm if you're not coming out of the storm you're getting ready to enter into the storm and this is the time to build your faith we must through many tribulation enter the kingdom of God James would later write in James chapter 1 verse 2 say my brothers count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience later on Timothy the young disciple Timothy the spiritual son of Paul would write in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 yes and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That is in the word of God. But there's, also, there's another one thing they did. They strengthened the disciples. They exhausted them. They warned them of their approaching hardship. But they were also there to set up the structure of leadership and to lead them in prayer and fasting. One of the things that's going to help you one of the things that's going to help me, one of the things that's going to help all of us, as we go through the storms, the suffering, the trials, is the discipline of prayer, the discipline of fasting, prayer and fasting. You have no idea how much power will come into your life as you spend time kneeling at the feet of Jesus, kneeling in front of him, because if you kneel before God, if you talk with him, you can stand before anything and before anyone. As you humble yourself before God through fasting, there is nothing else that will be powerful enough to shake you. Yes, the enemy will try, but no weapon will prosper. Tonight, as we come to the end of chapter 14 and get ready to start chapter 15 tomorrow, I want to encourage someone who is going through a storm right now. Jesus is with you. Call upon him. He will stand. He will rebuke the storm. He will stand. He will rebuke your fear. He will stand. He will bring it to an end at his own time. But even as he does that, your experience is not in vain. It is not for nothing. God will use it to bring honor and glory to his name, to advance his kingdom. Will you allow him to do so? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. Thank you for your word, oh God. Help us. Many times we face the tribulation, the trials, the storms we find in our lives. We, we shudder and we fear. Sometimes we are sad, other times we are angry. But Lord, you're telling us to count it all joy. Teach us how to do so mature our faith to the point where we will be glad that God you can use us to advance your kingdom I pray for those who are in a storm right now father I pray even for those who are just about to enter into a storm dear God strengthen them oh God for what is to come for those who are just outside of the storm remind them to be faithful Remind them it's not over yet. And through it all, Father, 
uphold us by your right hand as you have promised in Isaiah 41. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.